Character designs can make or break any creative endeavor requiring the use of your ocular cortex. You can, anywhere in the world, show someone the Superman S and they will instantly recognize it. Wear a Starfleet uniform to a con in any major city and ask some rando where it is from and they will tell you, oh, that's from Star Trek. Or if you show someone the helmet of Darth Vader, they will tell you that it is from Star Wars. The recognizability of an IP largely relies upon its aesthetics, especially in regard to character design. One of the reasons people are looking forward to Deadpool 3 is because we are probably going to see plenty of key jangling in the form of comic accurate costumes. This is partially why you see so many franchises being dug up for the purposes of taking on their appearance while not having a single thing to do with the substance or subtext of the storytelling. But I do not wish to turn this into another rant on the raiding of the tombs of dead franchises for corpo cash-grabbing purposes. Instead, I would like to talk about a new IP. Ladies and gentlemen, Stellar Blade. So yeah, you can probably guess what this is going to be about but I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online, sexism in gaming. So let's have ourselves a frank discussion on the sexualization of characters in regards to media, shall we? Now, I'm a red-blooded man, and thus I must admit to a certain bias on this subject. However, I am also logically consistent in that if this is okay, then so is this. And this has been the attitude of nerds the world over since the Dawn Age. Kratos of God of War fame can walk around bare-chested in the God of War games, and Thor, played by Chris Hemsworth, can be stripped buck-ass naked in Love and Chunder. But if the same act was performed on Portman, pearl-clutching cunts the world over would lose their shit because misogyny. And before some shrieking shiller down in the comments attempts to white knight and say that gamers just like Eve from Stella Blade because she's hot. Yes. And... The reason Stellar Blade has received the massive amounts of public attention that it has is because we have been hammered with woe-mans with the overall attractiveness of a block of moldy cheese at every opportunity. To the point when a character like Eve saunters into town, jiggle physics in tow, the result is that of course the average dude reacted like this. <laughs> Heck, a fair few women did, too. And, well, that just could not stand. Don't you know? Sure, Baldur's Gate 3 can leave nothing to the imagination as to the perverse love lives of Count Twinkula and his ursine blue falcon friend, but dare to show a woman as actually attractive? And prepare to watch as the gaming urinalists and media outlets in general descend like the barbarian hordes of old, shrieking about the evils of unrealistic body proportions, despite the character in question being modeled on an actual woman. None of this is new. These are the same people who went after Nier Automata and Bayonetta for the exact same reasons. Whereas in the era of the first Gamergate, perhaps they could go about before the UN again and lie about the audience, not anymore. This is the year 2024, and the customers simply do not care. And the studios will have to join them in disdain of the journos, or be the victims of their own stupidity. Hot take, I know, but people tend to like good-looking characters. It's kind of wired into us as humans. Look, don't get mad at me. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Now, does this mean that I'm going to pick up Stellar Blade simply for aesthetical purposes? No. It's a Sony exclusive, for the moment, and unless it comes out on PC for a semi-reasonable price, I will probably pass. But, should it come to PC, I may take the bait and give it a shot, which I probably would not have done as I am not the biggest Souls-like guy. Unless the character was as attractive as Eve is. But tell me what you think down below. This has been Pete, the Radical Nerd, signing off.